World 7 is the most iconic world in Mario 3, with its amazing music and overworld artistic creativity. The world is shaped like pipes while removing Hammer Brothers and having piranha plants to take their place. The greens are fresh and bright over a calm blue ocean giving a relaxing feeling while bumping to the beats. But let's talk about 7-2. 7-2 seems to be a level that everyone remembers, most notably the music pit. If you fall in, you'll have to hit some music notes if you want to get across. Going down the right side will lead to a power up and the left side will help you get back up. There is even a secret one up. Completing the level like normal and taking damage is very very slow, so we're gonna have to find something better than this if we want to speedrun 7-2. Let's go back to 2013 when Karua had the world record on the Wii Virtual Console. This is the best place to see the first developments of speedrunning 7-2. Using a P-Wing is a very good strategy. Unfortunately, our knowledge and ability to do serious practice has shown we were unable to utilize this strategy to its fullest potential. Massive slowdowns around the piranha plants makes this strat look really really slow. Upon first approach you'd assume this would not be a viable strat, causing many people to look for alternatives which is exactly what happened. Before we move on, let's see what this strat would look like in 2022 with our current knowledge of how the game works. We now know there is no reason to keep your tail after 7-2. Combo that with the right amount of skill to damage boost without falling into the music pit and you have a much better P-Wing strategy. Almost a year later I was able to secure the world record back using a new strategy in 7-2. I was able to save a lot more time over the slow P-Wing strategy by using what would be the second development of a faster 7-2. Using a star for 7-2 will be the most common way of beating this stage, even in today's standards. Back then we learned that it would be faster to build P-Speed at the start and figure out all the jumps later. The problem was the piranha plant right after the nipper, we had no way of getting around it. This is where the star was born. With the right amount of movement, we are able to build P-Speed and just make it past the plant with the star, saving a ton of time and consistency. Now that we have a few strats in order, let's take a look at how far the times have come down in one level. First take will be no P-Speed and using the note blocks to cross the gap and finish the level. As in a run, none of this movement will be absolutely perfect. Using a couple turnbacks, making sure to get good fire kills, and missing the pipe at the end. This strat is pure hell, thank god it's over. The final section of this level is the hardest, as it's jam packed with tough enemies, constant fire shooting at you, the nippers jumping up trying to pinch you, the movement is just very tough. As we go through the last two pipes and close in on the end of the level, we end up getting a finishing time of 38.64. Honestly, not bad. Any level under a minute is still pretty good in my opinion. Now let's compare it to the star strat that builds P-Speed early and see how much time it saves. As you can see, you go right over the pit and pretty much avoid all the danger. Of course you miss the end pipe like always, hardest pipe in the game. As we close in on the end we get a time of 23.73. I stopped my timer a few frames early so for the sake of argument we will round it up to 24 seconds. Total from the two strats that's about 14 and a half seconds faster. Damn. Lastly we will take a look at if you try and use the star and somehow manage to fall into the music note pit. What does a recovery look like and how damaging is it to the run? In 2022 it's pretty close to a reset depending on the runner. Most runners don't want to lose the same amount of time as a hand level and then get no hands. More often than not this is a heavy reset spot. Luckily the star strat is very consistent and the jump over the music note section is very basic. But it can still happen. Taking damage is not ideal, it would normally cost you around 30 frames, and that's exactly what would happen on a PB pace run. So this run is finishing off with a 39.53. Massive time loss. 2018 and 2019 was probably the most influential years for Mario 3. With things like figuring out which hammer bro has which item, practice ROMs, understanding subpixels, and lastly, a newfound understanding of the P-meter. You're probably asking me, what the heck does this have to do with 7-2? Well, good question. 
The new understanding of the P-Meter is the golden ticket into making 7-2 even faster, but a thousand times more dangerous. Let's start with this new logic of this P-Meter understanding. Have you ever seen anyone other than a task at P-Speed here in Clip? Well, neither have I. And that's because we can't. You see, a task can do something called a stutter step. It's where they perfectly time acceleration with when a P-meter arrow will build, allowing them to build P-speed in very tight, small places. RTA runners have no way of even knowing the exact moment an arrow will build or the mere control of Mario with his speed. This trick is simply impossible for RTA. What we never realized is that we can use this core idea and reduce it down to maybe one arrow in one instance to build P-speed earlier than we normally do. 5-1 is a great example. Getting P-speed anywhere other than the bottom was the main strat for 10 years. Until we started to look at the P-meter differently, we started to chew off a bit of the task one by one and managed to take a teeny tiny concept of stutter stepping. Looking closer at 5-1, you can see I do a turn back, stutter step, before I touch the blue block, and land on the question blocks. This is to delay Mario long enough so when I land on the question blocks, I start building the next arrow faster, as seen here. Getting P-Speed there in 5.1 is almost impossible without doing any stutter step for RTA runners. And this opened up the door for many new places to try and get P-Speed. Hand Trap 2, 4-5, four, 4-1, four, and yes, 7-2. With our new understanding of P-Speed, where even in 7.2 can we use this to not only build P-Speed, but save time? Well, we are no longer going to go back and forth at the start, we know that. What we are going to do though, is shoot the first nipper when we enter the level. Shooting this nipper will for some reason despawn the nipper where we need to build P-Speed. It actually works out perfect. This is the next crucial part, and it only gets harder from here. From these two question blocks, you'll have to make sure to shoot this second nipper. Doing this will allow you to run on the pipe that he was on. This is extremely important. The jump off the nipper pipe is the second most important jump in this trick. The idea is to land on the pipe as early as you possibly can and take damage. For some reason during the pause frames from taking damage, Mario will still continue to build P-meter. Or at least it doesn't become interrupted. Let me show you a perfect example. In 2-2, if we run down the hill and take damage from the Goomba, we are able to build P-Speed pretty easily and it's extremely consistent. This is from what I explained earlier. If we kill the Goomba and go back to the start and try the hill again, we will no longer be able to build P-Speed. Let's give it a few tries. This is all due to taking damage and having the P-Meter continuously running. We are going to abuse that method with the plant to make sure we build three arrows on the pipe before we jump off. We will not be using a stutter step once the third arrow is built, but because we understand the P-meter better now, we know if we small jump to the ledge above, the time in between will be enough to rebuild that third arrow as soon as we land. This is almost like an RTA pseudo stutter step. Without that third arrow built on the pipe, this trick will not work. Now that we have that under control and we are building P-Meter on this small runway, we have to do the exact same trick again. This time, once the fifth arrow builds, we perfectly time our jump, decreasing by one arrow over the gap, and rebuilding that same arrow as soon as we land and continue to build. Thankfully, that nipper despawned because now we have enough room to finish the P-Speed. If you fall into the pit, your run is over. If you take damage before the plant, your run is over. If you miss the pipe, your run is over. And if you fail any of these pseudo stutters, your run is over. Don't forget, if you are at 7-2, then you probably have not made many mistakes yet, probably got decent hammer brother movements, 7-1 was probably first try, and more importantly, you're probably on PB pace. This is why this is the hardest trick in the run. It is now time to see how fast this method of 7-2 is compared to the normal star route. Using the world record video, I managed to make it into the last pipe in a way where I could drop from pipe to pipe. 
Luckily that happened because we can now time what a near perfect fast 7-2 would look like. Won't be missing the pipe this time. As we get close to the end, we are going to finish with a time of 21 seconds and 8 frames. About 21 seconds. That's a massive time save compared to all other routes. Super Mario Bros. 3 is still ran at a hardcore level. People are constantly uploading and submitting runs on speedruns.com. The in-depth lore of P-Speed and complicated routing keeps this game alive and a joy to always pick back up again. Top level runners at this time are going for Fast 7-2 and crushing it. The consistency of some of these runners is mind-blowing. For now, we will just have to wait and see what is left for Mario 3 speedrunning. Thanks everyone for watching, I hope you enjoyed.